<laughs> Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Can you believe it? Season four of all the things the Aldean ISD podcast. My name is Shalia Reed, and I am the chief of staff in Aldean ISD. This season will not only highlight all the things, but we'll also have time to highlight the many things where we'll have shorter yet still impactful podcasts in just half the time. Today's episode of All the Things is not a mini episode. <laughs> I know I talked about it, but we're, we're not ready for those yet. We will sit down with Aldean ISD school board member, Ms. Rose Avalos, to discuss more about her, the history of Aldean, and the importance of serving the community. And last season, when we brought in Carolina, what we found is that people like to hear her voice. We've added her to the talent team, so we're going to do this episode in both English and Spanish. So you'll hear me for a little bit, and then we'll pick up and you'll hear her voice. But of course, I want to start with some random icebreakers. Ms. Avalos, are you up for an icebreaker? Uh, certainly. I know that you're a jokester. That's what the folks said. <laughs> um, these are fire in the icebreakers. That's what they're called. Basically, I'm firing off the questions. You take a little bit of time to answer them. They're pretty random and they're not connected. So okay, but um, I don't know if uh, people know this, but she has publicly admitted that she's a jokester and likes to play pr- pranks on people. I've seen it happen. It's really funny. They do not know what's coming. Okay, so I'm afraid a little bit that <laughs> she's gonna trick us here. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tread lightly. Would you rather go into the past and meet your ancestors, or go into the future and meet your future ancestors? To the future to meet my future ancestors. Okay. I don't want to ask why. We'll just keep going. McDonald's or Burger King? Uh, McDonald's for uh, their French fries. Oh, for the French fries. Dessert or appetizer? Dessert. Always. I know you like candy. Is it chocolate or regular? I like chocolate. Do you Anything like the hard with candy? coconut? Oh, coconut. So that's, what are those called? Almond Joys. Almond Joys. You yes, like those? I love those. Okay. What's the best prank you've ever pulled on someone in Aldine? Well, the best one, I almost had a teacher arrested. What? <laughs> it was one of my teachers and um, and a good friend, and she's still a good friend, believe it or not. But um, she had received a warrant because she had forgotten to pay a part of a ticket. Mm-hmm. And she'd already paid one part but forgot about the other one. And um, she was kind of late coming into work, but... I had called down to their office to ask if she was there, and her partner, teacher, was just said, oh, well, do you know what happened? And I said, well, I know a little bit. Well, of course, I didn't know anything, (laughs) but I've learned. And so she told me that she had uh, received notice that she needed to go to court and, Mm -hmm. and pay this ticket, but she was coming, you know, into school and then leaving. So I called one of our Alding policemen, which... Maybe I shouldn't have had, but I asked him to go with me down there and to tell her that uh, as a courtesy, our Alden Police Department gets a listing of warrants for the day <laughs> and that her name appeared and that out of courtesy to her as an employee that they were coming to let her know. So maybe she could take care of it. Right. So we went down there and she didn't have any kids in her in, in the room. And so they went over to the corner, and I could just see her making motions with her arms. And she comes over and says, "Um, I have to leave for a little bit. I said, well, what do you mean you have to leave? She says, well, uh, I forgot to pay part of a ticket, and I need to go take care of it. And um, I said, well, do you have the money to cash to pay? Because I don't know if they take checks. No. I said, well, then we need to try to see the bookkeeper, see if they can cash a check for you. So drive around to the front. And then come in. So the policeman and I and her partner walked down to my office, Mm -hmm. and he saw her pull up. And as she was coming in my door, he picked the phone up and was talking, but he had called his number and said, oh, they're on their way, so it's too late. They're going to pick her up. Oh, no. (laughs) And she turns to us and just starts crying and saying, oh, my God, how do I get myself in these situations? How did you keep a straight face? (laughs) I don't know. I guess it's just practice. So I looked at her. I said, this is a joke. 
Uh, you're you're killing us right now, so you need to. And she just looked at her partner and said, I told you not to tell her. I told you not to tell her. And she said, well, I thought she already knew. So she didn't really get mad at me at that point. But <laughs> that, that was. Um, that's a good one. That, that's a, yeah. That's a good one. I, I was also known to write a few prank letters to people. Like? Like from assistant superintendent or superintendent oh. to someone on campus and wow <laughs> <laughs> you, well it makes them act right because <laughs> somebody's always watching they don't know if it's true or not yeah and somebody i had worked with had applied for a transfer she was told that she had gotten the transfer but then i called her and said it'd been revoked she wouldn't be going there and she said well who is this so i gave her a fake name and <laughs> she called hr asking for that person <laughs> That didn't exist. <laughs> Those are but funny. I always disguise my voice when I do something on the phone. Can you disguise your voice now? Yes. Uh, who am I speaking to right now? May I speak to? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, who there? Who's that? I want to speak to. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I can. You can do some things. I can do some have you ever thought about that as a second part of the part of your career? <laughs> like, just move on and do voice um, voiceovers. And, yeah, voiceovers. No, I hadn't thought about that. You can read books. Yeah, in different voices. I love that. Okay, so y'all, I know we've spent a little time with Miss Avalos, and you might not know who she is, but I'm going to read this bio, and I'm very glad that they've gone with a longer version because I want to make sure everyone knows exactly how your story is woven into Aldine's history. So Ms. Avalos began, began her career in Aldine in 1972 as a teacher at Stovall Middle. She also taught at MacArthur High School, served as a counselor at Hambrick and Grantham Middle, and was a program director overseeing bilingual, ESL, and foreign language, and an assistant principal at MacArthur High School, she was the first principal of Escamilla Middle School. She returned to her alma mater, MacArthur High School, and served as the principal for 11 years before retiring in 2005. When named principal of, of MacArthur, Ms. Avalos became the first woman to serve a comprehensive high school as principal in Aldine ISD, opening doors for many who have come after her. In 2002 and 2003, she was named principal of the year by her peers. After retiring, she was elected to the position three seat on the Aldine ISD Board of Trustees, where she's held all four board offices and chaired numerous committees. And then what's not listed here is that in 2019, the newest one of our newest schools, the P Tech School, was named in your honor, the Rose Avalos P Tech School, um, the school that's done in conjunction with Lone Star College. So, so many things that this paper doesn't even scratch the surface on but many of those things I'm sure you're proud of I am it's it's it has been a great honor to see how the history has unfolded and I know when we did your naming event I was you know watching all of the people who are in leadership roles now how they connect you to their own story and then as we name leaders and they all of them turn to the board and say Miss Avalos was my teacher or Miss Avalos was my principal or she was the AP or she was the something that has to be wonderful how does it make you feel that's the payoff the riches that I I have gotten from working in Aldine is you know making a difference mm-hmm. and helping people find their talents mm-hmm. and use their talents and carry on a legacy of some you know sort that's what I would want is to have made a difference. And so when I see the success of people that I've associated with, I'm very proud. Yeah. Uh, proud of them and the fact that they've stayed with education and that they've worked and have advanced in positions. Yeah. I mean, I think some of them, I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You know, sh- this person was a principal or they lived in the community. But then there's others that are like, coming out of left field, you know, and I'm like, man, she her reach is so broad. And I, I, I'm with you. It's such a beautiful legacy. You you should, don't worry about it. Your legacy is going to live on and people will always remember you. Even if that building gets knocked down, your, your story is woven into the people. And I think that that's what matters the most. My question for you is, you've serviced or been around or connected to Aldine for nearly 50 years. Do you have a first memory of Aldine? 
Oh, absolutely. I remember being a first grader. Do you? Tell oh, me. Oh, yes. I was a first grader. I went through first and through sixth grade at Francis Elementary. Mm-hmm. Mr. Gunn and Miss Taylor were principals. Mm-hmm. There was a small number of Hispanic kids at mm-hmm. that time in Aldine, and of course, that's changed a great deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I had good teachers. You know, t- times were different then mm-hmm. a little bit, and I can understand. And I don't have any ill feelings or negative feelings because, you know, things have changed. We were not allowed to speak Spanish in school. And, of course, that's because, you know, the teachers didn't know what we were saying. So, you know, they couldn't determine if it was something good or something, you know, bad. Mm-hmm. That was just a way, you know, it was done mm-hmm. and things were done. But, you know, as time progressed, things changed. My family moved to Aldine in 1950, about two months after I was born. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a four-room house. We mm-hmm. shared a bedroom with two brothers and a sister. Mm-hmm. I was kind of right in the middle. I was really fortunate to have good parents. Mm-hmm. A father who loved our mother. Mm-hmm. That makes a big difference. Because all kids don't have that. And they valued education, even though my mother only went to the fifth grade, my dad to the third grade. Mm-hmm. And I have memories of being young, and I could hear my dad in the mornings drinking his coffee before he'd go to work, and he would be practicing reading the newspaper mm-hmm. out loud. Mm-hmm. And... I thought, you know, that's, he's really trying. Mm-hmm. And he got to where he could read pretty well, mm-hmm. you know, but at that time he would, he, nobody was in the kitchen, so mm-hmm. he would practice his reading. Yeah. And I thought that, that was really big of him to, you it know, was. to do that. Did you practice your reading? Like when you learned yes. how to read, did you do it the same way? And like, yes, because I started school, I didn't know that much English. Mm hmm. And so as I, I learned in school, then I'd go home and practice. And sure. I, I loved school. I missed it in the summers when we didn't have school. Yeah. So I would operate my own school. I heard that you had a school in your garage at seven. Tell me about that. Well, we had a detached garage. And of course, in the summer, you know, it wasn't air conditioned. It only had a small window, but I would set up a classroom. I would make out math worksheets Mm -hmm. and I'd get everything ready, um, set up, you know, two desks and my desk. And then I'd have to go find students. So I'd have to catch my little brother and his little friend <laughs> and drag them back. And, you know, they didn't have a choice because I was a little bit bigger than they were. And they would be my students. And they would say, you know, it was too strict, too strict. <laughs> and one of them be, has, uh, is an attorney. Uh-huh. So I'd like to think it was my summer school that it helped him do that. It absolutely was. I don't That's care right. what he says. That's right. Do you think that you always knew you wanted to be a teacher? I think I did. Mm -hmm. I used to tell my relatives, and of course, they thought I was dreaming, you Mm -hmm. know. But as far back as I can remember, six or seven. And that's when I, I know at seven, I was having summer school. (laughs) And and, uh, we'd have P.E., though. I'd let them go out for P.E. That's good. You you had a balance. Right. I had a balance. But I always said, you know, I want to be a teacher. If Mm -hmm. people ask me or I'd tell myself, I wanted to be a teacher. And I did it. So I gave you this, this, I gave a list of titles, you know, principal, administrator, all these things. Is teacher what you are at heart or lead? I'm a teacher first. You're a teacher and first. And foremost. And I think every position after that, in some ways, they are teachers. Mm-hmm. Your just, audience is different. Mm-hmm. And your, your activities might be different, but your approach to people um, and kids is similar. You know, you, you have these... Uh, virtues that you want to to share with people or to have them see you. I mean, to me, respect is really big. Yes. You know, you have to respect kids mm-hmm. for them to respect you, and sometimes it takes them a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. But that that's just a, a key and important thing. And you have to value people and, and kind of empower them uh, to do things and to be at leadership, you know, to try that. Mm-hmm. You just, you never know. I used to really like to involve the brand new teachers in some key committees. Sure. Sometimes they go, you want me on that? Me? Of course. I mean, you know, how else are we going to know if if, we're if they're capable and have that skill? So I'm going to um, transition you. I know after you retired, you um, have been on the board of trustees. What has been a challenge 
on the board of trustees. I can imagine as a principal, you know, you're at your school, you kind of can call the police and have people arrested if you want, even if it's a joke. You kind of run your own mm-hmm. show. Um, but then the board, you're looking at people, people are watching you, and really depending on your vote or how or the decisions you make. Um, what has been, I guess, a challenge, but also um, an easy part about being on the board? That's two different questions. The first question, what's been difficult, is that keeping students and staff at the forefront of the decisions mm-hmm. that you make. You know, as a principal, I always said it's the teachers and the students, mm-hmm. what's best for them and then what's best for the teachers. Sometimes that's hard to do, or either I may not totally agree with it, mm-hmm. but I'm only one of seven votes, and I, I have to be a team player. Mm-hmm. And once we make a decision, then we, you know, we have to live with that. That's been difficult to see things in a different perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, part of me is always going to be a teacher. Part of me is always going to be a principal. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have to step back and, and see it. The thing that's been easiest has been relating and relationships that I have formed over years and mm-hmm. years to be able to benefit from that as a school board member. Sure. You know, I hope that people are able to see me as a person, but yet respect the position that I have when it comes to school board, you yes. know, issues and business. There are certain things we have to protect, and and um, everybody may not agree with that. Right. Sometimes it's hard to deal with someone who's angry about an issue or a policy or something we've decided, mm-hmm. and they don't know all of the background. And the same thing is with, with when a, being a principal. There's some things that are just confidential. I just can't tell you. You can't. You mm-hmm. can't share it. You know, it's personnel issues. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just it's private. Sometimes that's hard. Yeah, I can imagine. I do not envy you. But I do appreciate you. And so we wanted to make sure that we kicked off the season with hearing a voice from a board member because this is National School Board Appreciation Month. And so if you don't hear from anybody else, which I know is not true, happy school board month, but also thank you for your service and your dedication. I know you could be anywhere else on those Monday nights and Tuesday nights (laughs) instead of sitting on that dais and looking at us. But you're doing it out of the goodness of your heart. And also because I think what you said earlier is that I care about the students, the staff, and and this community. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. A few more questions and Carolina's going to take over, okay? I wonder that we've talked about choices and opportunities uh, for our students. And um, as you alluded to, our school district has changed over the years from the time your family moved into 1950 to now, you know, 2023. But even in, in some short, brief periods of time since COVID has happened, our school district has changed. You know, the way we do and uh, do work and educate students has changed. What I wonder is when you think of choices and opportunities, what do you think about? When I think of choices and opportunities, I think of kids being able to have a choice to select something they're interested in Mm -hmm. and, and pursue. And the more that we come up with, the value of those I guess trainings will pass on to kids. Mm -hmm. I would just like to see an increase in those opportunities. I'd like to see an expansion into some of our regular campuses. Yes, ma'am. So that those kids also have, you know, choices. Mm -hmm. We may not be able to do it wholesale now, but that's kind of what I hope for the future, Mm -hmm. is that any student can go to their home school Mm -hmm. and have choices of what path to follow. Sure. That's, I guess, my my wish for the future. Oh, good. I like that. And then uh, one more. If you could go back to your seventh grade, seven-year-old self as you were preparing your lesson plan (laughs) for summer school, you know, what would you tell yourself about teaching the future? I guess I would tell myself that the the more that I invest in it, the more that I work at it, because it's not easy. It's even harder now, mm-hmm. I mean, for a teacher. The more, I think, honor it will bring to the profession, to your career, to your, I guess, engagement in it. Actually, going back to my seven-year-old self, I was I really was surprised how enriching— it has been. I enjoy teaching. It wasn't that I left the classroom 
for what I thought was going to be something better or more prof- profitable. It was by the urging and the pushing of people around me, mm-hmm. my mentors, and convincing me that I needed to grow and that I could still affect instruction by being in a different position. And that actually happened to me all the way down mm-hmm. from teacher to counselor to program director and to administrator. The only position I really wasn't absolutely in love with was program director, mm. to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And I think I personally found it too detached mm, from the classroom. From classroom and from the building, mm-hmm. associating with the same people, mm-hmm. growing together and getting to know people and talking to kids. That was the only position that, that I chose to do something else after two years. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, I was in a different, if you were doing your job as a program director, you're all over the district. Mm-hmm. You're at a different school mm-hmm. all of the time. Mm-hmm. I didn't uh, relate to that as well. It was, you know, I was, I felt isolated. Mm-hmm. I could see. All right, Ms. Avalos, the, this has been so insightful. You know, it's hard to sit down with board members and like cut the, the episode short. One, because you guys have so much history and so many you know, stories about how serving and leading in the community has impacted your life, you know, for a long period of time. But I'm grateful that you've been able to share. And I I have heard some of these stories before, but some of them are new. And I'll I'll dig a little deeper uh, on my own (laughs) and learn more about those. There's one more question I want to ask you before I hand it over to Carolina. And that is, why? Like, why do you do it? Why are you still around? Why are you still connected to Aldine? You could just, I'm sure, pack your bag, take your two little dogs and go to Hawaii and live on the beach or, you know, move to the mountains or do whatever. Why? Why do you spend your Mondays and Tuesdays with us in board meetings and go to community meetings and visit campuses? When I think of that question, I think of two things. I'm grateful Mm -hmm. and I'm invested. I'm grateful for the opportunities that Mm Aldine has given me. I'm grateful for the the basic education that it gave me. You know, I wasn't the smartest kid on campus or the best dressed kid on campus, but I had the opportunity. I found ways, you know, to actually out of four kids, I'm the only one with a college education, Um, the only one that kind of stuck to it. But it gave me um, the friends that I had, the people that I met, the teachers that encouraged me. And that was valuable after I came back to work. This is the only place I've really Mm -hmm. worked, had a Mm full-time job. Mm -hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I still Mm -hmm. miss it. Mm -hmm. That relationship you Mm -hmm. have with kids, there's nothing like Mm it. They'll give what you give them. You know, I think I might have sent one student to the office in my career, and it was probably for forging Mm -hmm. my name. It wasn't for student Mm -hmm. management. Mm -hmm. But— the teachers I had, the administrators around me, their encouragement, their mentorship, it was, I, I'm just so lucky to have had the opportunities that I've had and that Alding has given me. Mr. Donaldson was the superintendent when I became principal of MacArthur High School. Going to principal high school principal's meeting, being the only woman with five men, was not easy. I had to earn, in a way, I knew that I had to earn the respect. I had to hold my own. And I did, and I think humor helped me with that um, because we we could disagree very strongly in the meeting, and we'd get up and say, let's go have lunch because we just formed those kind of relationships. Mm -hmm. I'm invested in that I've I've given all of my career Mm -hmm. to the district, I want to see it mm-hmm. prosper. I care about mm-hmm. the people, the kids. I have many mm-hmm. relatives in the district. I've had some mm-hmm. as students. Mm-hmm. And that was enlightening, but it helped our relationship, okay. actually. Sure. One of my cousins admitted to me when he was one of my students, he said, you know, I never thought of my teachers in school mm-hmm. as human beings until you became wow. my teacher. Wow. And that was so eye-opening mm-hmm. to me. You know, I said, well, why do you think? He says, well, I just, I thought they lived in a different world and they didn't do things that we do and they didn't have family like we do. But yeah. it's true, yeah. you know, and he's successful now living in El Paso and I'm so proud of him and happy. And it's just 
those things that have influenced mm-hmm. my life, and it was parallel to the way mm-hmm. I was brought up, you know, to service, not to, uh, you know, not to worry about getting rich, making a lot of money, or, you know, that that was the key factor. It was just caring about people. It's the kind of mother and father that I had. That's that's why, you know, it's just, it's like it's in my blood. It's what I feel like I have to do until I feel I'm not being effective, and I may back away, but I'll always you know, be present and wish the very best and do what That's I can. Good. We need everyone. All right. I, we need everyone, including you, Carolina. It's your turn. Bueno, pasando ahora a español, quiero primero que todo darles la bienvenida a todos los que nos están sintonizando el día de hoy. Estamos entrando ya a la temporada número cuatro. Estamos en el episodio número uno, que como lo ha dicho Shelia, es el episodio, uh, estamos hablando acerca de lo que está pasando en este mes, que es el mes de la apreciación para los eh, directores o la junta directiva en todo el país se está celebrando y por esa razón tenemos una invitada muy especial, la cual lo voy a presentar en un momento. Pero primero que todo les quería dar la bienvenida a todos los que nos escuchan y solamente decirles vamos a estar esta temporada presentando una nueva, un nuevo formato en el cual estamos haciendo todos unos episodios más cortos y bueno, eso va a estar pasando más, más adelante. Pero como les decía, tenemos el día de hoy una persona súper importante para el distrito. Tenemos aquí con nosotros la señora Rose Ávalos. Ella ha sido estudiante, ha sido maestra, ha sido directora y ahora tenemos eh, la dicha de que ella sea la, una miembro de la junta directiva de Holding. Si ustedes se preguntan, bueno, ¿qué es la junta directiva? Bueno, ahí es donde se toman las decisiones importantes que tengan que ver con nuestro distrito. Mejor dicho, eh, para poder resumir un poco acerca de ella, me gustaría leerles la biografía. Eh, la señora Ábalos comenzó su carrera en Oldin en el 1972. Ella fue maestra de escuela en una escuela intermedia. También enseñó en una escuela secundaria MacArthur y ahí se desempeñó como consejera en las escuelas intermedias. Además, fue directora de un programa supervisando el programa bilingüe y de ESL. Eh, como nosotros sabemos, es súper importante para nosotros de la comunidad de habla hispana el poder entender, el poder saber acerca de, de lo que está sucediendo y este programa bilingüe definitivamente es súper importante. Además, se desempeñó como directora durante 11 años en MacArthur High School y la señora Ábalos se convirtió en la primera mujer como servi- de servir como directora en la Escuela Secundaria Integral de Olden ISD. Además, quisiera contarles que una de nuestras escuelas lleva el nombre de ella. Ok, eh, bueno, son muchísimos calificativos que podemos eh, nombrar para describir la señora Ábalos, pero con tantos elogios, dos premios recibidos, tener el honor de tener una escuela que lleva su nombre. ¿Qué significa para la señora Ábalos servir a Olden ISD durante 50 años? No parece, no siento los 50 años que han pasado. Cuando pienso en ese, en eso, sí, es, es, son muchos años, pero es para mí oportunidades que me dio Aldine para mí como estudiante y eso afectó a toda mi vida y toda mi carrera. No puedo expresar cuántas gracias tengo por lo que me ha pasado aquí en el distrito de Aldine y por eso me he quedado y fue importante que yo de para el sistema lo que me dieron a mí. Y, y fueron la, la educación y las oportunidades. No me hice rica y no soy rica, pero tengo lo que necesito. Y este, me da mucho orgullo poder hacer lo que me gusta, lo que es importante, y no tener que ser o tener una carrera, o tuve una carrera que no me gustaba, pero tenía que... Cuando me retiré del distrito, quería todavía dar al sistema, afectar la, los cambios, las, uh, las reglas, ayudar con los problemas. Y por eso corrí por la posición en el school board. El trabajo es muy importante y aunque no pague nada, a mí es, me da valor, me da razón y me da oportunidad de dar a lo que me dieron a mí. 
y por lo cual estamos completamente agradecidos todos nosotros, la comunidad hispana, la comunidad latina, de tener un representante, una voz, alguien que ha vivido todas las etapas desde muy abajo, de ser un estudiante, de ser maestra, de ser obviamente, yo sé que no es usted la inmigrante, pero es familia inmigrante, tercera o segunda eh, generación inmigrante, lo cual es muy importante para nosotros tener alguien con el cual nos podamos sentir identificados, con alguien con quien sepa qué es ser inmigrante, qué es no saber hablar el idioma. Y para nosotros como la eh, comunidad de Olding que no hablamos es el, el idioma, es, eh, definitivamente nos sentimos muy agradecidos de tenerla a usted como alguien en tantísimo puesto de importancia, representándonos y haciéndolo por amor, definitivamente, por amor, porque como usted la nombrada, no es por un sueldo, no es por un reconocimiento, los cuales ya tiene muchos a propósito, sino que lo está haciendo por el cariño, el, el compromiso que tiene con nuestra comunidad, lo cual me lleva a la siguiente pregunta. Alguien que fue director y supervisando el, el, el programa bilingüe y de ESL, ¿qué tan orgullosa o cómo se siente la señora Ábalos acerca de la Escuela La Promesa, la cual es exclusiva para estudiantes nuevos en este país que trata de ayudar con las barreras educativas? Me da tremendo orgullo que tenemos la, la Escuela La Promesa. Porque muchas veces los inmigrantes que vienen a comenzar aquí están perdidos, se sienten solos porque no entienden todo y no, no tienen la compañía de otros como ellos. Se me quebra el corazón a ver lo que está pasando con inmigrantes ahorita en el mundo. Porque como mencionó usted, sí, mi familia comenzó con inmigrantes, mis abuelos. Y si no fuera por ellos que vinieron, yo no estuviera aquí. Y no les puedo dar, no puedo tener problema porque ellos quieren algo mejor para sus familias. Todos quieren algo mejor para sus familias. Puede ser que necesitamos establecer un proceso para ellos, pero abriendo una escuela así como la promesa les da la oportunidad a ellos a uh, aprender más. No más fácil, pero más. Tienen la oportunidad de ser como los demás estudiantes y tener el tiempo y la escuela que les va a tener la paciencia, les va a saber cómo hacer la instrucción solamente para ellos, para que así puedan aprender. Siempre yo creo que en las escuelas regular, siempre ellos están tratando de alcanzar a los demás y aquí en esta promesa no es así. Y yo creo que el, el proceso de aprender inglés les va a ir más, mejor estar en una escuela así. Y no van a perder tiempo de instrucción en los contenidos. Definitivamente una de las ideas eh, con esta escuela es romper esa barrera, barreras que tal vez nosotros los inmigrantes o bueno, como usted lo menciona, su familia, tuvimos que enfrentarnos al llegar aquí y bueno, es parte del servicio que nuestra comunidad y nuestro distrito escolar de Olding está prestando aquí en nuestra comunidad a los estudiantes, a los que no saben inglés, a los que tienen estas barreras que en realidad sabemos que no solamente es el idioma, son muchísimas más barreras, pero que gracias a, lo, a este trabajo que se está haciendo en esta escuela, es una menos, es una barrera menos. Entonces, y por último, me encantaría preguntarle, ¿cuál es el legado de Rose Ábalos una vez que termine su trabajo aquí en Olding? Que tuve una diferencia en las vidas de estudiantes, de maestras, de, de la educación pública. Porque si alguien que no hablaba inglés en los primeros años y era pobre... Este, tener las oportunidades que yo tuve, todos los niños tienen que tener esa oportunidad. Tenemos que cambiar unas cosas porque es diferente hoy, pero es lo que quiero dejar. La verdad que sí se puede y que no, no nos olviden a todos los estudiantes. Bueno, ya hemos escuchado de la voz de la señora Ábalos. Por favor, no nos olvidemos de los estudiantes. Incluyámoslos a todos. Es el legado que ella nos quiere dejar. Señora Ábalos, muchísimas gracias por su tiempo. Ha sido una historia... Eh, 
muy emocionante, muy emotiva eh, el poder escuchar su legado, todo lo que ha tenido, las oportunidades que ha tenido en el distrito y a dónde, qué tanto usted las ha aprovechado de verdad. Yo pienso que este es un episodio que nos debe de inspirar a nosotros como inmigrantes, a nosotros como padres, a nosotros como hijos, como comunidad latina. Nos debe de inspirar esta historia de una persona que ha vivido todos los, los pasos hasta llegar a donde está. Muchas gracias por, por estar aquí con nosotros y a ustedes que nos escuchan, muchas gracias por habernos sintonizado este es el Old In Podcast y por favor nos pueden seguir por favor escúchenlo, compártelo y gracias por acompañarnos el día de hoy ¡Sí!